Was Stampede the Memphis of Canada? And I say this because when you think about it, a territory with the smallest population centers, but they ran regular weekly towns. They used smaller guys in more faster paced action type matches. They were willing to take chances on different gimmicks because they had to. They were on a lower budget. And they were noted as being inventive, sometimes maybe too much for their own good. But at the same time, they broke in a lot of guys who would go on to be huge megastars. Could be, although I think Memphis the would be... The style was completely different in the ring. The style was completely different. But the concept... The concept, I think, was just, I think Memphis was a little bit more microphone-based than bump-based. Yeah. Where, where Stampede was a little bit more meat and a little less potato, but I right. think it was still the same. Oh, there kind were of deal. a lot of potatoes. A lot of potatoes, yeah, probably more potatoes in, in, in Stampede, actually. <laughs> but I, I think you're right, though, because again, it was, you know, every Friday night at the Pavilion in Calgary and, you know, every Saturday in Edmonton, and there was, we had longer drives, though. Yeah. That's, no. That was the, and I think that, you know, when you look at, you know, the, you know, all of the deaths that have happened in wrestling, and so many of them came from Calgary, and it's like, I think it's, the road trips. Yeah. Because you got those weekly drives. You know, they used to do Regina and back as just one shot. It's eight hours each way. And, and Danny Davis worked up there for a, quite a while and, and loved the, the style there because he was a, a guy small that liked guy that the, could go. a small guy that could go and he liked the contact. But he said the, the thing was being in a van eight hours and then working and then going back, you know, 500 miles each way to, or Medicine Hat or the winter but, times, but the, 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 the cities are so spread out because especially yeah. Western Canada is so huge. There's only a few cities in each province. So you got long ass road trips and then you've got that five, four or five months of snow and bad roads. I remember Johnny Smith telling me the story once they were driving back from Edmonton. And the snow was so bad that they, it was just a complete whiteout, but they had to make it. And the guy would walk in front of the van, kicking snow off the center line so they could find the highway as they drove. Because <laughs> they had to get back. They had oh shows. Oh, my God. And it's, How would you like to just do that regularly? Yeah. Which you have done a couple of times in the past. I, 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 I think had I broke in a few years earlier, I don't know if I would have made it. I think, especially because I'm obviously less of the party or less of the other antics in the business, I think I would have thought they were all crazy, and, and I'm not. They were all crazy. <laughs> they were. No, but well, the, the ribs, I mean, every territory ribbed, but it they took it to the new level. It was a stew like the, the Mabel parties where, the, you know, they would get the newcomer to go out to the farmhouse where the guy's wife would take care of everybody because he was out of town, but he'd come back in with a gun and chase him through the fields. and that. But they would pull the van over and stage fights amongst each other, including get getting, color juice, on the side yes, of the road. getting juice with each other it was, for uh, Bill Kazmaier, right? The world's strongest drive, man. Yeah, Bill, I think it was Ron Ritchie and Jerry Morrow. That they realized he was getting close to the end of his rope, and they decided to see if they could push him off the cliff. Yeah. And they were one of these long-ass eight-hour And Billman was involved, wasn't he? Oh, I, I he, was he was probably the instigator, was, yeah. probably. But they decided they were going to, and they so the whole trip, I think it was Ron and Jerry were bickering and yelling at each other and shoving and picking fights and trying to have <laughs> Bill think these guys are crazy. And they had made a blade and got ready and finally it's like, pull a goddamn van right <laughs> yeah. And they kicked the door open and the one guy grabbed a bottle of beer on the way out and smashed it against the side of the van and jumped the guy in the ditch. And the guy got juice. So the guys <laughs> are pulling him off. The guy's bleeding all over the place. This guy's jet. And Gazmar is like this, and he, I think when he got back, it was like this place is fucking crazy. I'm getting yeah. hell, and he left the territory. Even even in Tennessee, the Fargo brothers, when they shot each other with the blank pistols in front of witnesses, <laughs> they still never got color on each other. Um, and I I heard one that, that I just tickled me is the the athletic commission would have doctors there to take. <laughs> you know, guys, blood pressure, and, and they would have a phony doctor say, oh, my God, your blood pressure is 250 over 180. You're going to die soon. You can't work tonight. And, oh, shit. And they would tell the guy to go and lay down in the shower on his back, put his feet up on the wall, turn the cold water on, and jack off to relieve <laughs> the pressure. And, they, and then they would peek around as the guy's laying there under the cold water with his feet up in the air, jacking off like a complete idiot. But that kept... Until Dynamite, and, you know, Davey was the, the tag along there, but Dynamite took things too far in a lot of cases. But the ribs, even that intricate, kept the guys sane in this well, it loony kept, bin, it kept right? the ribbers sane and drove the it's, other guys Yeah, it drove off. the other guys nuts. So the, the, yeah. there was a good rotation on the other end. But, yeah, it was just you had to amuse yourself. And But there was a lot of – I know it was one of the few <laughs> things – one of the first things Keith taught me was hand on top of the drink. Yeah, because they thought it was fun to just pill your friends. So if you passed out, they could 
you know, strip you naked, duct tape you to a telephone pole, shave your head, or again, take your wallet and buy you a ticket to a bus to Regina, put you on the bus while you're passed out, and you just wake up in Regina with no <laughs> wallet. And this is before cell phones and other stuff, and it's just like... And, and it was just like, oh, you got me, buddy. And they just amused themselves. Dynamite would try to gimmick the guys that were driving the van, right? And, and then they'd say, well, were you idiot? Because he... <laughs> If it, no, seriously, the guy driving the van would say, oh, okay, I don't trust this. And you give it to the guy sitting over here. The guy drinking a few minutes later, they're, he's falling out of the van like jello. And the guy driving would say, well, you fucking idiot. If it had been me, it would have killed all of us. Yeah, but it had been funny, mate. Well, fuck you. Hey, we all, we all. Um, 